Hello. Let's have a look at another example in which we're going to use the second derivative and the connection between displacement velocity and acceleration to analyze the behavior of a moving particle. So let's take this example in which the position for a particle is given by the following position function s of t equals to t at power 3 minus 6t square plus 9t where t is the time so it has to be positive and we're going to measure it in seconds. The distance given by the position function is going to be measured in meters. As you know this the graph for this uh, position function s of t it's already given to you but, but using any graphing calculator you can determine very easily the graph of this cubic function. Now keep in mind I used uh, a graphing calculator online that uh, apparently wouldn't let me change x and y to uh, t and uh, s of t so I hope it doesn't confuse you with uh, this x and y but as we know th those are the common letters used for uh, the um, independent and dependent variables in our case the independent variable is the time the dependent variable being the position so it's s of t the first thing we need to determine in this example is to sketch the graphs for the velocity and acceleration functions uh, we need to remember what is the connection between displacement and velocity and as we know velocity represents nothing else than the first derivative for the displacement in other words as we did in a previous example we can look on the graph of this uh, position function where we can identify some particular points that we can certainly know what happens to the slope of the tangent to this curve as we move along on this curve from left to right we identify that when t is 1 and 3 the slope of the tangent to this uh, curve is going to be 0 so those are the points of interest for us so I can right away place these um, uh, two points at 1 and 3 right on the x-axis or the t-axis where I know the graph of the velocity function is going to intersect the x-axis or the t-axis in our case now all we have to do is to determine when exactly the slope of the tangent is positive and when is negative. If we start from minus infinity to the first point of interest which is 1, so from minus infinity to 1, we see that the slope of the tangent to the blue curve is always positive. So I know the graph of the velocity function is going to be above 0. If I'm looking on the next interval from 1 to 3, the slope of the tangent to the blue curve is going to be negative as you can see in other words between 1 and 3 the graph of the velocity is going to be below the x-axis so I'm going to sketch a curve between 1 and 3 that is under the x-axis now from 3 to infinity I can see how the slope of the tangent to the blue curve is positive always in other words the graph of the velocity is going to be above the x-axis so the graph for our uh, function is going to be a parabola just like the one represented here and it makes sense because remember we started with a cubic function for the displacement and its first derivative the velocity is represented by this quadratic function so we decreased the degree of this polynomial function by one and this process we're gonna repeat it again only that this time we are going to uh, consider the velocity and the rate of change for the graph of this velocity function in order to sketch the graph for the acceleration function so it's getting even simpler so from this quadratic function I'm expecting to find a linear function it's quite obvious right away that the velocity function has only one point where the slope of the tangent is zero and that is when t equals to 2 as you can see when t is 2 the rate of change for the velocity or in other words the acceleration is going to be 0 so I know acceleration is 0 when t is 2 I need to determine on the intervals minus infinity to 2 and 2 to infinity what happens to the rate of change for this uh, velocity function I can very easily see how uh, from minus infinity to 2 the slope of the tangent to v of t it's always negative in other words the acceleration function is going to be represented by a line under the x-axis and 
for the time getting values anywhere above 2 seconds, the slope of the tangent to the graph of uh, v of t is always positive. In other words, the acceleration is always positive. So we're going to have this uh, linear function which intersects the x-axis or the, the t-axis, the, uh, the time, at 2. When t is 2, the acceleration is 0. Until then it's going to be negative and above 2 is positive. These are your s of t, v of t and a of t. The position function, velocity and acceleration function. Now there is one more thing that I like to do for this example at point B. We need to analyze when is this particle slowing down and when is it speeding up. As we know from the course this is going to be determined by analyzing basically the signs for velocity and acceleration. So now that we have the graph for these uh, two functions, uh, it's going to be easy to analyze the behavior of this particle on its entire domain. First of all, we need to identify uh, when exactly is this particle changing its behavior. And that is very clearly in those points when either the velocity or the acceleration goes through zero. That being said, and uh, the fact that we already have the graphs for both velocity and acceleration, all we have to do is to identify those points on the graph where the curves of these two functions are intersecting the, the time, the x-axis. So we can see that for t equals to 1 second or t equals to 3 seconds, the velocity v of t is going to be 0. And uh, when t equals to 2 seconds, the acceleration a of t is going to be 0. That is very important because we need to analyze each interval in particular. Let's create a table in which the first column is going to be taken by the intervals and the first interval we see is from 0 to 1 because as we mentioned earlier t representing the time has to be greater or equal to 0 because it makes no sense to take a negative value for the time. The next interval is going to be between 1 and 2 and I'm using round parentheses because I'm not including those values. As we know in those particular values either velocity or acceleration is zero. So their product is going to be zero. In other words, in those particular moments, our particle is going to be momentarily at rest. The next interval is going to be from 2 to 3 and the next would be from 3 to infinity, I said. I'm probably pushing it because I'm making an assumption that this particle is not, is not going to change behavior but given that we have this uh, function for it I have no reason to believe otherwise so I'm just going to consider to infinity I don't have any other information about it so uh, based on what I have I can make the assumption that uh, the behavior of the particle is going to continue to infinity this way now that we have the intervals, let's actually analyze the signs for both velocity and acceleration and then analyze the product between the two. On the first interval from 0 to 1, I see how velocity is above 0. So in other words, it's positive. So I'm going to put a plus sign. Now the acceleration on this interval 0 to 1, it's very obvious that it's going to be negative. So velocity positive, acceleration negative, their product is going to be negative, obviously. And what that means is that this particle is moving in a forward motion because of the positive sign of the velocity and since the acceleration is negative that, that means a decelerating uh, movement. So it's moving in a forward direction, decelerating. On the next interval 1 to 2, the velocity is negative that means the particle now is moving in the backwards direction and since the acceleration is negative, in other words, it's increasing in the same direction with this backward movement of the velocity, that is basically a backward accelerated uh, behavior for our particle. Now for the next interval from 2 to 3, the velocity is still negative but the acceleration is positive. In other words, 
our particle still moves uh, in a backward direction but it's decelerating because the acceleration is opposing the direction of the velocity. Remember these are vectors so their direction the direction of this velocity and the acceleration vector is very important. In this case the product between velocity and acceleration is going to be negative so we know the velocity gives the backward direction for the movement and the positive sign of the acceleration makes it decelerate because it's opposing the uh, sign of the velocity that's why and finally from three seconds moving on the velocity is positive and the acceleration is positive as well so the product between velocity and acceleration is positive that translates to uh, saying that this particle is moving in a forward direction and it's accelerating and all this behavior can be also analyzed on the graph of the position function as well as you can see on this interval from 0 to 1 the particle basically it's um, moving forward and the closer it gets to 1 the slower it's increasing and that's consistent to what we analyzed earlier based on the signs of the velocity and acceleration and their graph plus the product between the two from 1 to 2 we said the particle is going to move in the backward direction accelerating and that's exactly what the graph of the position function the blue curve is showing us as well because from a momentarily at rest position it starts to move backwards and it's moving backward accelerating from 1 to 2 and from 2 to 3 keeps moving backwards but it's decelerating it's slowing down so that at uh, 3 seconds it's again at momentarily at rest and from that moment on it starts to move in the forward direction and accelerates as you can see it's uh, gaining speed more and more and that's another way you can analyze this type of behavior I hope you found this example useful thanks for watching